They were called right whales by whalers because they were the right whales to hunt. As well as containing a lot of oil and baleen, they also swim slowly, can be found close to shore and float when they have been harpooned. They were hunted from the 11th to the 20th centuries and their numbers were decimated by as much as 5% of their original population. Right whales actually consist of three different species, each living in the oceanic basin they are named after. They are the North Atlantic right whales, the North Pacific right whales, and the Southern right whales. Southern right whales live throughout the Southern Hemisphere, roughly between latitudes of 20 and 60 degrees south. They feed in the cold subpolar waters around the Antarctic, and migrate north in the winter to their breeding and calving grounds off the coast of southern South America, South Africa, Australia and New Zealand. North Atlantic right whales were originally widespread throughout the North Atlantic, but are now only found in the western North Atlantic, along the eastern US and Atlantic Canada. Their summer feeding grounds extend as far north as the Scotian Shelf and the Bay of Fundy, whilst winter calving grounds are found in the shallow coastal waters off the coasts of Georgia and Florida. North Pacific right whales were once found across the entire North Pacific. They are the least studied of the three species of right whale and very little is known about them. It is believed that there are only a few hundred of them left, possibly as two populations, a western population found in the Sea of Ococ and northwestern North Pacific and an eastern population in the Bering Sea and the Gulf of Alaska. There are only around 30 individuals left in the eastern population, and it is believed to be the most endangered stock of whales in the world. In 1935, the League of Nations banned the hunting of right whales. However, this was not the end of hunting for the North Pacific right whales, as the USSR hunted them illegally from 1965 to 1999 which further decimated the population and impacted on their recovery. Whaling also decimated the numbers of southern right whales. In the late 1700s, it is estimated that there were around 55,000 to 70,000 southern right whales in the southern hemisphere, and that by the 1920s, this number had been reduced to around 300 individuals. The whaling ban introduced by the League of Nations enabled the population of southern right whales to recover and it is estimated that there are around 10,000 individuals at the current time, which is a great success story. However, the rate of recovery is different for different populations of southern right whales. For example, the population found off the southeastern Australian coastline has increased by 7% since 1985, but the Chile Peru population has not recovered and only has around 50 individuals. This population is regarded as critically endangered by the IUCN. Recent genetic research has shown that these whales are feeding in the sub-Antarctic waters around South Georgia. This is an important step in determining their movements and putting conservation strategies in place. Another population of southern right whales use the Valdez Peninsula, which is in Argentina, as a nursery ground. This population has suffered the largest mortality event of any species in the world. Until recently, the population was increasing by 7% per year, but between 2003 and 2014, at least 626 southern right whale calves died. 113 calves died in 2012 alone, and in 2015, there were 42 dead whales, 90% were calves. The most recent data that I could find is for 2017, when 28 whales died, 96% being calves. Tests on tissue samples for a variety of infections, toxins and disease have been inconclusive and there does not seem to be one single cause. However, there was found to be a statistical relationship between the monthly densities of a diatom called Pseudonychia and the deaths. An unusual phenomenon is also occurring, that of the harassment of the whales by kelp gulls, which may be contributing to the death of the whales. The kelp gulls land on the backs of the whales and feed off skin and blubber. This began in the 1970s and has increased dramatically over the last few decades and mother calf pairs are the primary targets. The gulls cause large and deep lesions which are very painful. The whales have been seen to flinch and swim away to avoid the attacks. The attacks can last for hours 
and as a consequence, the mothers and calves are expending a lot of energy. The mothers and calves spend less time nursing, resting and playing than pairs not under attack. At this time of year, the mothers are fasting and there is little food around to replenish their energy reserves. The stress of being harassed and the extensive wounds is having a negative effect on the health and body condition of the whales. It is thought that the wounding could lead to dehydration, impaired thermoregulation and energy loss due to having to heal the wounds. It certainly could be a contributing factor to calf mortality, but experts say it does not explain the variation in calf mortality seen over the years. Research into why this population and the Chile Peru population are not faring so well is ongoing. Let's hope that there is an answer soon and that management strategies can be put into place. The North Atlantic right whales also started to increase from 270 individuals in 1990 to 483 in 2010, which is at a rate of 2.8% per year. But their numbers have also started to dwindle, with the survival of adult females falling more compared to that of adult males. Since 2017, these whales have been experiencing an ongoing unusual mortality event, where 32 whales have died and 14 were seriously injured. The number of calves born also declined, and in 2018, there were no new calves. In October 2020, it was estimated that there were only 360 whales left, with deaths outpacing births. This time, the reasons are a bit more obvious. They migrate along North America's eastern seaboard, where a lot of fishing takes place. 83% of the population shows signs of entanglement, and it is the leading cause of death. Even if they are not being killed by becoming entangled, they have been seen to be carrying fishing gear with them for months and even years, causing a huge amount of harm by cutting their flesh and hindering their swimming and preventing them from feeding, all of which causes a huge amount of stress to the whale. Scientists think that chronic entanglements are one of the reasons that female right whales are having fewer calves, and the time interval between calving has also increased from three to five years to six to ten years. This coast also has many shipping channels, and blunt force trauma due to collisions with shipping vessels is also a major cause of death. Another contributing factor to their declining numbers is that they have been observed to be skinnier than southern right whales. This is by as much as 20%, a difference of about £10,000, with mothers being in particularly poor body condition. This could account for why numbers of females are declining more than males and the reduction in calf numbers could be because they don't gain enough weight to become pregnant. NOAA Fisheries and other organisations are determined to protect these awesome creatures and save them from extinction. They have developed management plans to reduce the risk of entanglement and to slow down vessel traffic to reduce the risk of collisions. There are also two designated critical habitats, one in the Gulf of Maine and Georgia's Bank region, which is a foraging area, and one off the southeast US coast, which is a nursery and calving area. The areas covered by these critical habitats were updated in 2016 after it had been observed over a number of years that the whales have been spending more time out of these areas and consequently had fewer protection from entanglements and vessel strikes. The reasons for this are due to changing climate, in particular warming seas, which have caused the location and availability of the whales' prey to change. It is just so sad that, having survived their populations being decimated due to overhunting, and in some cases seen their numbers increasing, that these three species of right whale are all facing yet more challenges due to the activities of humans. Let us hope that further research can find some answers to why numbers are declining, and that strategies and management plans can be put in place to protect the remaining individuals in these vulnerable populations.